Hey, how's it going, folks? Welcome What's back up, to TV. I'm Jack. I'm Devin. So, did you go to uh, Oktoberfest last weekend? I now? did not. Did you? Dude, the biggest thing in Tulsa all year? Yeah, I went. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was it was cool. Have you been yet? Like in the previous years? No. Yeah. I think I asked you that last I, time. I have actually never been. You so. should you should check it out. It's pretty cool. It's it's kind of dirty and loud and messy and gross, but you know. So what's so good about it? Um. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's like they have good food and stuff. I don't know. I enjoyed it. Well, what did you drinks. have there? I had some guy's funnel cake that he left on the table. <laughs> but it was it was fine. Like, did you know him? No. Um, what did you do last weekend? I did not do that. <laughs> well, well, last weekend. <sighs> you gotta live, man. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of. Partying hard, I decided to run a. I, I ran a 15k at practice. But Dude, you that, can run. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't run, so that's the problem. Ah, all right. right, folks. Speaking of running, let's run on over to the news desk. <laughs> let's go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. See ya. Hello and welcome to this week's segment of TUTV News. I'm Hannah Horton. And I'm William Bennett. We got le plenty of interesting bits, so let's get to it. Steve's Pizza, a locally owned Michigan pizza shop, fulfilled a special request for a former patron this week. Julie and Rich Morgan grew fond of Steve's Pizza over two decades ago when they lived in Battle Creek, Michigan. The couple planned a trip back to the restaurant for September for Julie's birthday, but complications arose. Rich was diagnosed with cancer, admitted to a hospital in an Indianapolis, and later moved to hospice care. Julie's father called the restaurant in October and spoke with Dalton Schaefer, an employee of Steve's Pizza. The 18-year-old offered to make the 225-mile trip. When asked why he did it, Schaefer simply replied, replied that he, quote, just wanted to make them happy, end quote. NASA is considering a manned mission to Venus to help determine the effects of climate change. The surface of Venus is inhospitable with a barren rocky landscape and temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. However, NASA plans to use the planet's dense atmosphere as a base for exploration. Venus's upper atmosphere is the most Earth-like location in the solar system with an average temperature of 77 degrees and a pressure similar to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. The airship would float around the planet in this atmosphere while missions concerning the surface are carried out below. Scientists hope to learn more about how climate changes transformed Venus from an Earth-like twin into what it currently it is currently. This will illuminate the implications Earth's current climate has for our own planet's ec ecological health. A Tulsa dog has been reunited with his owner after thieves snatched him on Wednesday. Jonathan Justice said that someone ransacked his home after kicking in his back door. His one-year-old King Charles Cavalier Spaniel named Charlie was taken in the process. However, after searching through social media posts on Saturday, Justice discovered someone brought Charlie into the Marina Animal Clinic. Justice is just happy to have Charlie back, saying, quote, I can't focus on the negative. I just have to move forward. I've got him back, and that's the best thing that could ever happen, end quote. However, the investigation for the rest of his items is still ongoing, and anyone with information is asked to call the police. Canada voted in favor of fully legalizing marijuana on Wednesday, October 17th. The country is now the second in the world to do so, joining Uruguay in doing so. Canada captured the rest of the world's attention. This massive rollout of the drug will offer clearer insights into the pros and cons of legal recreational marijuana. The question of legalization has been sharply debated for years in many countries. Common points of conflict arise over the effects of usage, the safety of drug usage, the effect on crime, crime rates, and effect on the economy. Over the next few years, multiple studies will be conducted and data collected that will hopefully answer some of these questions. Canada's decision and aftermath will inform other countries for decades to come on how to best handle drug policies. Hurricane Michael has unearthed shipwrecks that were previously covered on an island off the coast of Florida. According to Florida Department of State spokeswoman Sarah Revel, the ships were originally washed ashore in 1899 when they were wrecked during Hurricane Carabelle. However, they have been mostly stationary since then. Over time, some parts of the sites have become exposed. It is currently unclear how many of the 15 ships have been unearthed. Once the hurricane recovery efforts have been completed, the state will hopefully schedule archaeologists to visit the site and examine the 119-year-old relics. 
Well, it's really good to hear that a pizza delivery man traveled 225 miles for that sweet couple. Yeah, it's so sweet. I just wish somebody would travel 225 miles to give me a pizza. Yeah, that would be nice. We all wish. Well, you guys are going to have to look forward to our Halloween-themed TUTV uh, episode next week. Yeah. Do you have a favorite childhood costume? Oh, yeah. I was a flamenco dancer one year, so that is my best memory. <laughs> But uh, that is all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in with us next week for Halloween. I'm Hannah Horton. And I'm William Bennett, and this is TUTV News. Welcome to the interview segment of TUTV. Once again, I'm Devin, and we're going to talk homecoming with you guys with our very special guest, Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie, how are you doing Hi, today? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, homecoming and what your job is with them? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having us. Um, I'm the uh, alumni chair for homecoming this year, and homecoming 2018 is coming up on November 1st through the 4th. Uh, this year, we have a really fun theme. It's Rock You Like a Hurricane. So awesome. it's kind of, yeah, kind of a nod to our athletic program and just the spirit we have for our school. And of course, we have lots of fun events planned for um, that whole weekend. That's awesome. So you tell me a homecoming celebrated first through the fourth? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about the events that happened on, on those days. Okay. Well, our biggest events um, happen that Friday and Saturday. So on November 2nd, we have our pep rally and our bonfire, which is a big annual TU tradition. Um, Student Association is helping with that this year. We are really grateful to them um, for being our sponsor for the pep rally and bonfire. Uh, but that event is Friday night, so on November 2nd, it starts at 7.30, and um, it's going to be really fun. After that, there's TU on Tap, which is downtown at Albert G's, so kind of a fun time for alumni that are back in town to reconnect with people they haven't seen in a while. Um, lots of fun things going on. Well, that's awesome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your job setting up for Homecoming and what all the production goes into making this massive festival? Sure. We have a committee of about 30 to 40 volunteers um, that help put this together and um, we just kind of help with everything that goes on that week. So from um, kind of smaller tasks like judging the street painting um, and judging the yard decks that everybody's gonna be doing to bigger things like running the tent party that's gonna be going on on Saturday before the game, which everyone is invited to, by the way. Um, that is 3.30 to 5.30 on Saturday. It's a big alumni association um, like Tailgate. So you guys will definitely want to come out to that. Awesome. So the mm -hmm. tent party is filled with alumni everywhere? Um, so it's hosted by the Alumni Association, but any of these events are open to anybody that wants to come. So we have a big tent with food and we've got giveaways. And so we just welcome everybody to stop by while they're tailgating on Saturday. Awesome. So for people who want to come in that aren't students, mm -hmm. uh, how much are the prices for alumni and then outside of that even? So um, All of the events for homecoming kind of vary. The tailgate is free though, so anybody can stop awesome. by for that. Yeah. Awesome. So a lot of the pre-festivities are really cool. So uh, you mentioned that there's a lot of in-depthness to <laughs> kind of working with it, even from judging, uh, what was it? The street um, I was talking about street painting. Tell yeah. Tell me about that. What happens um, there? That's student-led. So oh. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's all the different student organizations so um, right in front of the stadium. Events mm -hmm. going on all over. Uh huh. Yeah, like there's all time. sorts of things going on. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to tell you. That I mean, we want everybody to come to the game on Saturday. Absolutely. Um, so, of course, we want to cheer on the Golden Hurricane. At halftime, we're going to crown a homecoming queen, homecoming king. So that's going to be really fun, of course, um, and we help with that. So, awesome. Yeah. So uh, what's you guys' part in that? Are you guys helping deciding that or like? Um, no, or? so that's all student vote. Yeah, we did help with the actual application process and the interviews. That was all um, the homecoming committee. But now it's up to student vote. So we'll see what you guys decide, and um, we'll crown those winners at the game at halftime. Awesome. Well, yeah. me being so new, I've, only, I've heard a lot of things about the homecoming. I heard it's a massive turnout. Do you know, like, is it always this grand, and how many people show up? Um, you know, we have hundreds of people that come back for it. It is such a big time for people to come back, um, see what's going on around campus, 
Uh, we just, we love to see the alumni that have left Tulsa and want to come back and reconnect with the local alumni. It's a good chance for the students to interact with the alumni. Um, there are some other events like essays, having a breakfast with alumni and students. So it's just a nice time for everybody to connect together. That's awesome. And you're a Team TU graduate, correct? I am, yeah. So what's one of your favorite parts personally about the homecoming week? Oh, you know, I um, the pep rally and the bonfire is one of my favorites. Um, I remember going when I was a student, and it's so much bigger now. Um, SA is actually building the bonfire next Thursday, and it's huge. It's out on Dietler Commons, which was the U when I was here because I'm old. Um, but the bonfire was much smaller back then. Now there are tents set up. There's food. Um, there's a huge pep rally, and so it's been really fun as an alumni to see how that has gotten a lot bigger um, in the years. Yeah, that's awesome. I bet to see how that's evolved. Well, yep. I personally am very excited, and I bet all you watching are excited as well. Be sure to tell your friends and family to join us, uh, would you say, November 1st through 4th? Yeah, November 1st through awesome. 4th. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Putting a lot of work in, guys. Be there to cheer on the Golden Hurricane on their game, and then also join us on all the festivities, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining the show, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks for having us. Awesome. No sports. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the sports section. Once again, I'm Devin. I'm Sam. Uh, we got a lot of news. We got women's volleyball, uh, we got men's soccer, and we got the football team, among others. So uh, let's get into it. Let's kick it. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane football team traveled to Fayetteville to take on Arkansas this past weekend. Tulsa missed two field goals in the first quarter. The Razorbacks eventually found a foothold in the game, notching a field goal and a touchdown through the air just before halftime. The Golden Hurricane offered little in resistance, amassing a total of 12 yards of offense in the third quarter. Malik Williams added a short touchdown run to make it 20-0. to zero. Another late field goal from Arkansas would see the game in 23-0, sending Tulsa to 1-6 and in the season. The Golden Hurricane will have to win the remainder of their games if they want to secure a bowl game. Their next game is at 6 o'clock at home this Saturday against Tulane. The Golden Hurricane men's soccer team is in the thick of its conference schedule. After a week off, Tulsa hosted the Memphis Tigers at Hurricane Stadium on Saturday night. The Golden Hurricane had momentum early but failed to put together any solid chances. Memphis had more opportunities to score throughout the game, but both teams would fail to record a goal through 90 minutes. For the fourth time this year, Tulsa would concede a goal in the overtime period. They were dealt their third conference loss of the season. McIntosh's group will now turn their attention toward ORU, who they face on Tuesday night at 1 OK Field. The Tulsa women's soccer team spent this past weekend on the road. Thursday night, the Golden Hurricane were in Philadelphia to take on Temple. Tulsa had a few chances to score, but were unable to capitalize. Temple were, uh, were able to get a goal 10 minutes in, and that ended up being the deciding moment. On Sunday, the Golden Hurricane made the trip to Storrs, Connecticut, on the back of four consecutive losses to take on UConn. Valerie Morris grabbed two goals in the first 20 minutes of the match to give the Golden Hurricane some breathing room. Anna, Anna Williams would add another with 16 minutes remaining to secure a 3-0 win for Tulsa. The ladies play next on Friday at home against Memphis in their last regular season game this year. The Tulsa women's volleyball team had a pair of matches in the Lone Star State this past weekend. On Friday, the Golden Hurricane traveled to Houston. The first two sets were tightly contested. Tulsa would claim both sets 25 to 23 and 25 to 22. The damage was done at that point and Tulsa would finish off the hosts in the third set for the sweep. Sunday's trip proved much less more enjoyable. After dropping the first set against SMU, the Golden Hurricane would fight hard in the second and third set, pushing both to the very end. Taylor Horsfall's 29 digs were not enough to help Tulsa as the ladies fell 3 to nothing against the Mustangs. The Golden Hurricane will play next on Friday night as they host Temple at the Reynolds Center. The World Series is finally upon us. After coming from 2-1 to one behind in the NLCS, the Dodgers overcame a late push from the Brewers to win the series in seven games. In a far less contested series, the Boston Red Sox made short work of the Houston Astros winning 4-1. to one. The Dodgers and the Red Sox began 
begin the installation of the Fall Classic on Tuesday night in Boston. Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw will tow the rubber for Game 1. Chris Sale will take the mound for Boston, while the Red Sox have won four in a row and are 7-2 and two in the playoffs. So, Devin, yeah. who do you think is going to win the World Series? I have, I don't know, the Red Sox did really well. I, if I had to be smart, I would, I'm going to cheer for the Dodgers, but if I had to be smart, I would say Red Sox. Red Sox are winning. Calling it right now. Probably. Yeah. It was really sad, though, the football game. Arkansas beating We couldn't even score a single point. I don't know what happened. I had a friend named Heath. He went to the game, but he was dressed in all Arkansas stuff. I'm calling him out. He should have been wearing Tulsa, but should whatever. Wearing the water, water under the bridge. Yeah. I think that's all the time we have for today. Yeah. Um, but thanks for watching. And join us next time with TUTV Sports. Peace out. Welcome to TU Entertainment, y'all. I'm Alex Reed. And I'm Miles Fisher. We got a bunch of hot bops for you today. So welcome to entertainment. Let's go! A group of award-winning musicians have recently collaborated to create an album for children that have been separated from their families at the border. Some of the creators of the album include Lynn Manuel, Miranda, Josh Groban, Idina Menzel, Audrey McDonald, and Laura Benanti. The new bilingual children's album will be released on October 26th and funds will benefit nonprofit organizations helping to reunite the families. Benanti, who headed up the project, has described it as a labor of love. All the artists that contributed to the album titled Sing a New Home hope it can lift the spirits of the separated children. Well, well, well. Cardi B is back again. But this time, it's not for more drama. Cardi seems to have been trying to redeem herself after several weeks of being in the news for sticky situations, including, of course, her fight with Nicki Minaj at the New York Fashion Week that we covered a while back. Cardi is spotted handling, handing out free winter coats in Brooklyn, New York, this past Thursday after temperatures dropped unexpectedly. Cardi commented, quote, I didn't know it was going to be so big. My homeboy Chuck, he told me, hey, let's give out coats to our community. And I said, I'm pulling out. What's up? End quote. It's refreshing to see Cardi in the news for a kind gesture this week. As many of you may have heard, Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson broke off their engagement last week. The couple first appeared in the spotlight when they announced their engagement after only two weeks of dating. Grande made her first public appearance since the breakup at a taping of NBC's A Very Wicked Halloween. Grande also announced on her Instagram story that she would be taking a break from social media, saying, quote, It's hard not to bump news and stuff that I'm not trying to see right now. It's very sad, and we're all trying very hard to keep going, end quote. It sounds like Grande is still just into her life after her breakup with Davidson. Speaking of engaged couples, Haley Baldwin, who became Justin Bieber's fiance in July, has decided to take his last name. The 21-year-old model recently registered as Haley Bieber for her new clothing line. Additionally, there have been speculations that Baldwin and Bieber actually did tie the knot secretly in September at a New York courthouse. The new Haley Bieber, who is a daughter of SNL's Trump impersonator Alec Baldwin and Justin, have not confirmed the secret weapon, the secret wedding, but they appear to be happy, and that's important. Fifty-six-year-old singer Paula Abdul took a bit of a stumble during her, first, during her concert at Biloxi, Mississippi on Saturday. Abdul fell off the stage in the middle of performing her song, The Promise of a New Day. Fans were extremely concerned, but Abdul apparently handled the mishap gracefully. 
One fan and audience member described the incident saying, quote, after the fall, she got back up and never skipped a beat, end quote. With no injuries or other major concerns despite the dangerous fall, Abdul is doing well and plans to continue the rest of her tour. To you, Homecoming is next week. The theme for the year is Rocky Like a Hurricane. Tons of events will be taking place throughout the week leading up to the big game on Saturday, November 3rd. Julia Johnson, a TU senior, expressed her excitement for this week, saying, quote, I always look forward to the street painting during homecoming. I love getting to spend that time with my friends, eating pizza and painting together, end quote. The week will end with Golden Hurricanes taking on University of Connecticut Huskies, Rain Cane. I know, isn't it? I know. You know, the thing I'm most hyped about is, you know, I'm glad that Cardi B and Nicki Minaj seem to be living better lives, you know? I know. I, She's always on this news desk. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. I feel, I feel like a disgruntled teacher or something, you know? You sit in an office and it's like, <laughs> uh, why do you keep coming into my office? I don't want to keep seeing you here. You're trouble and a nuisance. And that's not okay, you hey, know? She just wants that attention, though. Hey, I mean, who does Maybe she just wants to hang out with you. That's why she's sending all these news stories here. She wants well, to be your on that note, well. I think we're pretty good today for entertainment. We'll see you next week, everybody. Peace out. Hey, folks. Today we're here on TU's campus. We're just going to be asking some people some questions, some trivia, and we'll see how they do. You guys want to answer a question? Sure. Um, uh, one, one second, let me get my notes out. You're all good. So, uh, who 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 was the second? Uh, yeah, who's the second president of the United States? Uh, Thomas Jefferson. That's what I thought too, but it's wrong. Yeah. It's John Adams. Sorry. John Adams. Uh, what country is Zimbabwe in? Zimbabwe is a country. What country is this? Sorry, let me take a look. Yeah, it's fine. Take your time. Are you serious? Yes, please answer the question. You have 10 seconds remaining. Oh, well, I mean, it's the Fortnite map. That's it. <laughs> Excellent. Who was the second president, uh, president of the United States? <laughs> One of those things where I look stupid. I know the answer. You don't have to look stupid. And I was wondering, like, if later you want to, like, hang out and we can just kind of, like, chill, like, just to get the, my mind off things. Um, no. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm tired. Hey, how's it going, man? Do you want to do an interview real quick? It's fine. It's okay. This is hard. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Hey, welcome back, folks. What's up, guys? I didn't know we had a fellow Texan among us. Shout out to the guy in red in the previous segment. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Right? Entertainment it segment. should right? be. The guy in the glasses in the previous package was a serious hunk. Don't know who that was, but... I know. It was me. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how'd the interview go? Interview? It went great. Good. I think, I think everybody on watching is going to love it. You feeling more confident now? Oh, absolutely. We're going to redo it. Oh, why? We cut to Yeah, the camera was like... Oh. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. So, uh... Man, I didn't know we had another Texan on the on the scene. Shout out to the guy wearing red earlier. You know I know, I mean? right? That was really entertaining. Fellow Southerner. <laughs> Can you do a Texan accent? Can I? I <laughs> you, don't have to you don't have to try. <laughs> I thought fine. about trying, and I just I was like, no. Well, the, like, the, other week, <laughs> the other week, we went back to, we went back to Texas and went to the Texas State Fair. And man, really? is that place Texan. <laughs> There's like a giant effigy to like a, a cowboy called Big Tex that just stands there. And uh, every once in a while he talks. He goes, I'm Big Tex. And it's great. I'm Big Tex. Wow. <laughs> Three, <laughs> it's not bad. Three years ago, he, he burned down. And like the pictures of like this giant Texan just bur like in flames is one of the scariest things ever. It burned down? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll send a message. <laughs> yeah. It was the scariest thing. 
<laughs> You're looking at electrical fire. Some but super fans got it crossed. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got going for your hometown, man? You got any uh, landmarks? <sighs> any like landmarks? big techs? <laughs> I don't think. I mean, no. We just got. You got, you got McDonald's at least, right? No, that's actually the town next door. <laughs> you don't we have McDonald's? McDonald's? No, but we got no two way. dollar generals. That okay, that's sense. not bad. I mean, like, but it kind of sucks that they make you pay two dollars, like instead of one. <laughs> Am I funny, guys? Okay. No. <laughs> a $2 general. Yeah, Dallas is a, definitely a superior city. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> to any it's city. Massive. It's really good. You should come by. Come on down. I hear it's got great shopping. Like, I hear it's where a lot of people go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching uh, this episode of TUTV. I've been Jack. I'm Devin. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys next week. Love you. Later.